if you love name exploit then please consider leaving a super thanks in the comments of this video it's a great way to make a one-time donation to the channel and help support name explain there have been human inhabitants in South America for over 10,000 years. But when you look at a modern map of the continent, you'll notice that the majority of countries there today are products of South America's colonial history. This means the names of South America's countries are an interesting mixture of ones that link to the continent's native past and ones that have connections to its relatively more recent history with settlers from other parts of the world. This gives South America's countries a really interesting mixture of names. In fact, in my personal opinion, South America is the continent with the most interesting names. Many of them have interesting stories attached to them, or come from languages that we don't find anywhere else. They are way more interesting than, say, the names of many countries in a continent like Europe, where the case for many nations is they are named after a group of people, and the name origin for that group of people has been lost over time. I mean, they're still interesting, but not as fun to talk about, in my personal opinion anyway. The names of South America's countries, however, give us a fascinating look into the history, geography, and many other things that occurred within them. So let's look into how the nations of this wonderful continent got their names. However, just a reminder that this is something of a whistle-stop tour of country names. If you want to know more about one specific country's name, then I may have already done a video on it in the past, which is somewhere on the channel, or I might end up doing a video on it specifically sometime in the future. And also for ease's sake, I'm not going to be looking to the various islands around the continent. There may or may not be part of South America and may or may not be countries. Like Trinidad and Tobago is considered part of North America, despite how close to South America it is. And then we have the Falklands too, which is something of a point of contention. It's just a lot simpler if we stick to what is on continental South America. Though if you really want to know about those two in particular, we have whole videos on them. So let's start with the northernmost country of South America, Colombia. This is a great place to start because this nation is named after someone who is deeply linked with the continent of South America as a whole. That being of course, Christopher Columbus. Columbus is seen as the man who discovered the Americas and opened them up for colonization for Europeans, for better or worse. He is seen as a central part of the history of not just South America, but North America too. And his name has been used all across these continents in cities and regions. Colombia, however, is the only country named directly after him. The name Colombia once applied to much more land, however. When the name was first conceived by revolutionary Francisco de Miranda, the intention was for the name to apply to the entire of the Americas, or at least the parts of it ruled over by Spain. It was then used in the name of Gran Colombia, a state that included modern Colombia as well as other nations, but then it broke up and we arrived at the nation of just Colombia that we have today. Something that often catches people out with this name is the spelling of it. It uses two O's instead of an O and a U, as the word Columbia can often be spelt that way too. The reason it uses the 2 O spelling is because the name of the country derives from Christopher Columbus's name in his native Italian, which is Cristoforo Colombo. To the east of Colombia, we have the nation of Venezuela. This country's name is really interesting and it derives from none other than the explorer of Amelago Vespucci, who also has the honor of having this entire landmass named in his honor too. The name Venezuela translates roughly into meaning something like Little Venice. Amelago Vespucci named this land area after the tourist trap in his home nation, because when he was exploring the land, he came across Lake Maracaibo, and the people who lived next to this lake lived in little huts on stilts next to the water. These abodes reminded Vespucci of Venice so much, he named the land in its honour, albeit a more condensed little version of the city. Moving eastwards from Venezuela, we arrive at a part of the continent which was historically called the Guianas. This region now includes parts of Venezuela, as well as the nations of Guyana, Guiana and Suriname, as well as French Guiana, which isn't a country unto itself, but an overseas territory of France. That name of Guiana seems to derive from an unknown Amerindian language. In their language, the name means something along the lines of the land of many waters, which relates to their coastal location, as well as the many other bodies of water found in this land. It seems that when Europeans settled in this part of the land, they simply used the name the natives were using. Once this wider region split into smaller 
smaller countries, they got new names. The name of Guyana is a simple adaptation of Guiana, while the name of French Guiana is just the word Guiana as it is, with French tacked onto the front of it. Suriname, however, like many European countries, is actually named after the native people that Europeans met when they first arrived in the land, that being the Sulanen people. Also, it's the only country to have the word name in its name. Which is fun, let's go back to the western side of the continent for now however, as we arrive at the country of Ecuador. Ecuador is one of the most obviously named countries on our planet. The name is simply the Spanish word for equator, the equator being the imaginary line that runs perfectly through the middle of our planet, and is the dividing point between the northern and southern hemisphere. Ecuador took on this name after splitting from the aforementioned Gran Colombia, and it makes sense, the equator is very much something worth celebrating. And as the equator goes across the entire planet, it means that other nations lie in its path too. One other nation is even named after it too, that being Equatorial Guinea over in Africa. South of Ecuador we have Peru. There seems to be multiple ideas as to where the name of Peru came from, but most seemingly agree that the name derives from one local native word or another. One idea is that it comes from the pre-Inca name of Veru, which was their word for the land. However, the more popular theory is that the name comes from Beru, with Beru being the name of a native leader or chief in this land. Whatever the case may be, one of these names got picked up on by European settlers and was corrupted into the name of Peru we have for this land today. To Peru's southeast, we have the nation of Bolivia. Like Colombia, Bolivia is too named after an actual person from history, that being Simon Bolivar. He played a huge role in shaping South America into the land it is today and freed huge areas of it from Spanish rule, including the modern nations of Colombia, Venezuela, Ecuador, Peru, and the one that was named after him. Bolivia. As well as freeing these countries, he ruled them too. In fact, he was president of Bolivia, Colombia, and Peru, though not all at the same time seemingly. Make no mistake, this guy is of huge significance in the continent, so it makes sense why a nation would be named after him. Initially, this country was just called the Republic of Bolivar, but some wanted it to have a more country-like sounding name. Supposedly, congressman in the land, Manuela Maletín Cruz, said on the matter that, if from Romulus comes Rome, then from Bolivar comes Bolivia, in regards on how to construct a proper country sounding name from the name of their liberator. We now move on to the largest country in South America, Brazil. Brazil takes up around 50% of the entire landmass of South America. It's that big. A really neat fact I love about Brazil is that every country in South America shares a border with it, minus Ecuador and Chile. None of that however explains where the name came from. When this land was first settled by the Portuguese, it was dubbed Tela de Santa Cruz, meaning Land of the Holy Cross. That name soon changed however, when they discovered a valuable export in the land. In Europe, a type of red dye was highly valued that could only be created using a tree found in India called the sapinwood or Indian redwood. A relative of this tree however was discovered in abundance in this land and could also be used to make this red dye. The Portuguese named this type of tree the Pau Brasilia with Pau meaning tree and Brasilia meaning red slash ember. As this tree was so profitable to the Portuguese, they named the entire land they found them in Brazil in honour of those trees. Paraguay and Uruguay have somewhat similar names, specifically the latter part of their names. This is because the Guay at the end of their names both come from the same root word of Guay, from the Guarani language which means river. This relates to the Uruguay River and Paraguay River, which run through each of their respective countries. The countries are actually named after these rivers. So what about the parts of these names that are different then? Well the Yuru in Uruguay seems to potentially mean a multitude of things. The most popular idea on the matter is that it means either snails or birds. This is in relation to the different kinds of birds and snails that reside within and across the waters of this river. Things get a little bit more confusing with Paraguay however. Many sources claim that the Guay in Paraguay doesn't mean river at all, but instead means born from, with the para part instead of meaning water. So the name means something along the lines of born from water in relation to a tribe who lived along the banks of the river, or might relate specifically to just their ruler. Another idea is that Paraguay means the side of the river, once again relating to a tribe who lived on the side of the Paraguay River. 
It's all a tad confusing to say the least, but the general consensus is that both names relate to water and rivers in some way, shape or form. What's interesting however is that the Guay at the end of Uruguay and Paraguay sound similar to the start of the Guayana name, used in French Guayana and Guyana. As mentioned, that name means the land of many waters, so it also has an aquatic link to it. This connection is apparent because all of these names come from the aforementioned Armoridian language family, with Paraguay and Uruguay's names coming from the Guarani language, which is an Amaridian language, and Guiana slash Guayana coming from an unknown Amaridian language. It's very interesting to see similar name forming letters reappear in multiple countries, especially considering that these nations own rather different parts of South America. Continuing south we arrive at Argentina. Argentina is actually named after the precious metal of silver. This comes from the time when Spanish and Portuguese explorers started to venture into this land and how that the Rio de la Plata, the river that makes up one of modern Argentina's borders, was full of the valuable metal. This river's name also means the river of silver in Spanish. So much silver was found in this land that the land got named the land of silver, with Argentina's name derived from the Latin word for silver as opposed to the Spanish or Portuguese term, with silver in Latin being called Argentum. Yeah, this is also why silver is represented with AG on the periodic table. And finally, we have the nation that makes up a huge part of the continent's western coast, as well as covering the southern tip of the nation, Chile. While we aren't entirely sure as to where the name Chile comes from, we do have a couple of ideas. One idea is that the name is imitative of the call a bird in the land makes, as it makes something of a Chile, Chile kind of sound. Though another popular idea is that it comes from the Amala word of Chile, which means where the land ends. This is fitting as the nation is primarily made up of coastline, so in huge parts of the country the land does come to an end. And of course it contains the very end point of South America itself on its southern tip. And fittingly enough, this seems like a good place to end this video. Like I said at the start, South America has had some really interesting country names. From lands named after local heroes, to countries named after things ranging from silver to snails, and even the city of Venice. And of course, many of the country names are relics of a time in the continent's ancient past, before the arrival of colonial settlers. South America is definitely a part of the world I would like to visit one day, and hopefully that will be happening soon. Name Explained depends on viewers like yourself supporting the channel financially on Patreon, so a huge thank you to everyone who does. Donating just $1 a month helps the channel amazingly and gets you bonuses including ad-free videos, exclusive content, the power to request ideas to be made into actual Name Explained videos, and your name at the end of the video with all these awesome people. Visit patreon.com forward slash Name Explained or click the link down below to find out how you too can support the channel. Thank you. Thanks for reaching the end of the video, why not watch another and subscribe to keep up to date on all things Name Explain. You can find myself on Instagram where I'm Name Explain YT and join the Facebook group Friends of Name Explain to talk with myself and other name nerds. All that will be linked down below. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and once again, thank you all so much.